Hello, and welcome back to Umaneko. When last we left off, we had basically speedrun setting up another weekend at the Shiramiya Mansion. Without even being allowed to wait for dessert, we were chased out of the room. I heard that, in the end, our parents were unable to get Grandfather to respond. Well, I hate to say it, but I feel like giving Grandfather a high five right now. He was probably pretty satisfied with how his strange letter had given his children a good shock, since they'd all been so infatuated with the inheritance problem while Grandfather was still alive. I also felt like our despicable parents had gotten what they deserved in all of this confusion. But I couldn't really say that I was feeling great. I felt all sulky. Apparently, Grandfather hadn't seemed concerned with the whole thing, but he also hadn't denied anything about the letter either. When talking about the witch's letter, Grandfather's name kept popping up. If Grandfather knew that someone was stealing his name, then, considering his character, he'd probably be mad with rage. But even though Grandfather now knew the contents of that letter, he coldly ignored it. So, did that count as a silent yes? Aunt Ava and Dad were trying to interpret the letter in their favor, their greed clearly visible. It wouldn't have mattered so much if that was all, but the adults had now started focusing on Maria, who had received the letter. They kept pounding her with questions about who had given it to her. Maria repeated over and over again that she had gotten it from Beatrice, but there was no way such a mysterious person could have sneaked onto the island. After all, this island's small, and there's no one living on it outside the Ashuramiya family household. Maria kept repeating that she'd gotten it from Beatrice, no matter how many times she was asked. The adults seemed to think she was trying to trick them, so they didn't hold anything back and questioned her until she broke out in tears. When Maria was released, she sobbed, all worn out from crying. After our parents ordered us to go to the guest house and take Maria with us, they shut themselves up in the dining hall and started getting louder and louder as they discussed the inheritance. It seemed that, because of that strange letter, Uncle Christ's chances of becoming the next head might have been reduced to a blank slate. And in exchange for accepting him, my dad and the rest were trying to swindle Uncle Christ out of a lot of money, or something like that. Disgusted as we were, Jessica and I were happy to move over to the guest house. We didn't want to be under the same roof as those filthy adults, their heads so filled with thoughts about money. George Anarchy pleaded on our parents' behalf, saying that he wanted us to understand them. I understood his reasoning. No matter how filthy this talk of money was, it wouldn't go away if you just closed your eyes to it. But even so, how could they sink so low as to overtly fight over the money of the dead? Maria had cried herself dry and was hiding in her bed. She hadn't even twitched for a while, so she was probably sleeping. Who in the world gave that letter to Maria-chan? George Nissan, you can't ask her that anymore. Isn't it fine to say that Maria got it from Beatrice and leave it at that? After all, we don't want to make her cry any more than this. Even though we said that, we couldn't clear away a gloomy feeling. There are only 18 people on this island now. The thought that 
somewhere in the rain, a 19th person gave Maria-chan that letter and is now hiding somewhere. Doesn't seem realistic at all. Most likely, somebody got Shannon or someone else to put the dress from the portrait, to put on the dress from the portrait, and cleverly got Maria to go along with this story. No, in Maria's case, just seeing the dress would probably convince her that it really was Beatrice. Maybe it doesn't really matter who handed her the letter. The important thing is who sent it. The point is that Grandfather wanted to cause an uproar by assuming the name of the witch. Seriously, that old geese is good at riling people up. The most likely answer is that our occult loving Grandfather was playing around. Handing the letter over to Maria, who shares the same hobby as he does in such a dramatic way. Though he failed to give any thought for what Maria would have to go through, making it a pretty shitty thing to do. Seriously, messing around with Maria's pure heart? It doesn't matter who handed the letter over. Maria says she got it from Beatrice, so let's treat it that way. I agree. Let's do that. To Maria-chan, Beatrice is kind of like what Santa Claus is to most kids. Whether we're dealing with some non-existent 19th person or Santa Claus, as, a, as long as we all acknowledge them, they'll at least exist inside Maria. I see. I guess it can be important to lie to a child to protect their dreams. Huh? What's up, Jessica? Are you still angry? Jessica had her hand on her chin as though there was something that she just couldn't understand. When I called out to her, she came to her senses. Ah, uh, sorry. Well, actually... I was wondering if Maria might have actually met Beatrice. What do you mean by that? Are you saying there's a 19th person on this island? If you truly take Maria-chan's words to heart, then you would arrive at that answer. No, that's not what I mean. I'm talking about the story that someone we don't know has been living on this island since long ago. Living, you say? Where? In the forest. The adults were gathered in the dining hall, spending a very long time continuing the discussion that had been started by Beatrice's letter. Kraus strongly claimed that the letter was a simple prank, but he couldn't overturn the claim that Kinzo's failure to deny the letter was answer enough. Judging by Kinzo's character, if he knew that a letter had been written in his name, he would be mad with rage. Since all the siblings knew that, Kairos had no choice but to withdraw his claim. Without even having to summarize it, the contents of the letter were simple. The person who could solve the witch's epitaph would receive the headship and assets. This did a lot of damage to Kraus, who had been sure that he would receive the headship and was better news to the re than the rest of them, who had already given up, could have hoped for. However, there were some points that worried them. The person who solved the epitaph was not limited to a member of the Ashura Mia family. Taken literally, anyone, no matter how doubtful their origin, might receive the headship. And furthermore, this meant there was a chance that all of the Ashura Mia's family's assets would be stolen by some unknown person. In that sense, it was definitely not a situation where even the other siblings could afford to lower their guard. Had this letter come from an assassin sent by Kinzo, calling themselves Beatrice? 
Or was this the scheme of some unknown person, trying to steal the Ashuramiya family's wealth? They still didn't know the truth. But they could say one thing for certain. Maria had... received this problematic letter... today, on this island. In other words, someone planning something to do with the le with that letter was on this island today. Had it been set up by Kinzo, one of the four had it been set up by Kinzo, one of the four siblings, or maybe some unknown person? No matter how much they suspected each other, they couldn't reach a conclusion. After getting tired of bickering with each other, they finally reached the extremely obvious conclusion that doubting each other was just a waste of time. We've made no progress. We've just been spinning our wheels. That's right. And the mere fact that you've realized it means we won't have to waste any more time. It is not certain that father sent the letter. My husband is merely exasperated by your inability to hold a conversation. Who's unable to hold a conversation? You keep yelling at me every time I say something. Do you truly think that such shameful behavior is fitting for a member of the Ashuramiya family? Would you give it a rest, Ava? You too, Natsuhi-san. That topic's finished for now. Shall we all cool our heads off for now? Let's have some cool drinks brought over. That sounds good. It would probably be wiser if we cooled our heads. Don't you want to take a short break too, dear? Anarchy looks like she's in a bad mood, so I'll pass on that break. But I agree about the cool drinks. Rosa, have someone bring some water. A whole pitcher. Yes, understood. Rosa headed over to the extension telephone in a corner of the room and called the servant room. She then passed on what Rudolph had told her to the person on the other end. The vicious bickering up until now vanished as though it had been a lie. That silence continued until Goda finished setting the table and retreated from the room. Is there anything else that you require? No. Please leave us. Yes. Then if you will excuse me, if you need anything, call me at any time. After listening to the sound of Goda's footsteps disappear off into the distance, everyone took a deep breath at the same time to break the tension. It sure is raining hard. I wonder if this 19th person is taking shelter in the Rose Garden Arbor right now. Uh, I wonder. They might be able to escape the rain there, but it would be quite cold. That mysterious 19th person is a visitor. Sounds pretty interesting, just like a mystery novel. Normally, in that kind of story, it's a safe bet that the person doesn't exist. That one of us 18 would be faking it. I suspect Genji and the others. Just as I thought, it would have been better if we had dismissed all of the servants of the one-winged eagle, no matter what excuses we had to make. Come now, don't say that. We must be grateful for their long years of service. Of course, we can't let our guard down. I'm sure you agree too, Nissan, that whether father or not was behind whether or not father was behind this, the person who handed Maria the letter was a servant. Indeed. In any event, we were all being friendly in our big happy circle until dinner, weren't we? All of the siblings have alibis. Only a servant could have handed Maria that letter. But all of the servants said that they were too busy with the bed making to have any spare time during which they could go to Maria-chan in the Rose Garden. 
Hey, 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 what are you trying to say then? You aren't saying that the Witch of the Forest, Beatrice Sama, came over and actually handed Maria that letter, are you? <laughs> Rosa, you used to believe in that so much. It really frightened you, right? Don't tell me you still believe at this age. In the Witch of the Forest? If she did exist, I'd love for her to appear. But no matter how much I wished, she didn't appear before me even once. She didn't save me from my crisis. Uh, of course not. I just thought that since all 18 of us said we didn't do it, there might really be a 19th person. <laughs> that can't be. In the first place, we were the only ones who came in on that boat. We didn't see any mysterious stranger riding with us. You don't think they could have swam across this rough sea, right? I can't really imagine it. <laughs> Logically, that's true. It is difficult to imagine that there's a single, hidden, and uninvited guest on this isolated island. However, it looks like some of us still can't abandon the possibility completely, right? Hideyoshi had laughed it off, saying there couldn't, there couldn't be a 19th person. But Kyrie had sensitively picked up on the delicate atmosphere among the four siblings. In a normal situation, there shouldn't have been any uninvited guests on this small, isolated island. How would they have come here? And from where? And where were they hiding? And why hadn't they appeared openly? even though they had sent a letter in their name. Nothing could explain that. But not only had the four siblings not joined in on Hideyoshi's laughing, they also seemed unable to completely deny in their hearts the possibility of a 19th person. Curious son Please don't misunderstand, it's not as though we believe in anything like that fairy tale le legend of the witch. Is this another topic to insult father? Simply speaking of such a thing as a betrayal against him. <laughs> I wonder. However, this is father we're talking about. It could be possible, right? I, I don't know anything. What's this? What's this? Why has everyone gotten so gloomy? What are you talking about? In short, the legend of the witch isn't a joke but a fact? That's ridiculous. <laughs> of course, nobody believes in some witch riding a broom and flying in the sky. But the woman in that portrait, Beatrice, might really have existed on this island. Hideyoshi-san. It looks like we aren't talking about a witch, but something a little simpler. So, it must be something like this. Everyone suspects that Father had a mistress named Beatrice secretly living somewhere on this island. Is that it? Father was always exemplary at keeping strictly to the rules. It is completely inconceivable that he would bring something so filthy onto this island. Natsu so snapped at them immediately, but it looked like the four siblings, including Kraus, didn't agree. On the contrary, they appeared to think Kinza wouldn't even have hesitated to do something like that. From the beginning, it had been whispered that Kinzo had built a mansion on this island specifically because of the existence of an entrancing mistress. I'm sorry, Natsuhi-san. I know how much you respect Dad, but that rumor's been going around a long time. All the buildings in Rakanjima were built by Dad on his own. People have always guessed he had some contraption or secret room set up in this mansion that only he knew about. And it's always been whispered that Hidden somewhere on this island is a secret mansion none of us knew about. I see. This island might look small on a map, but it's quite large for just the Ashuramiya family to live on. 
so people have suspected that he built a secret mansion somewhere in the uncivilized forest for his mistress to live in? That would be quite a large-scale scheme. In the beginning, people thought it might be somewhere inside this mansion. That there might be a hidden basement with a fabulous hidden room, where the witch in that portrait was secretly hiding. After seeing that intricate auto-lock on Dad's study, it isn't too hard to imagine, right? <laughs> After all, Father did spread the rumor that a large amount of gold was hidden somewhere by some mechanism. I wouldn't be surprised if there existed some hidden room inside this very mansion that none of us knows about yet. When Mother was alive, she would often scour the entire mansion, searching for Father when he wasn't anywhere to be found. Mother also suspected what Rudolph just said. She believed there was a hidden door or stairway somewhere, and that his blonde-haired mistress, mistress was hidden behind it. It's hard to believe, but here, but there are some actual examples in other countries of people cheating with someone over a period of several decades by making them live in a hidden attic room. Furthermore, Kinzo had a mansion this extravagant it was possible to suspect the existence of a hidden room. From what I've heard, the legend of the Rockinjima witch was just a fairy tale made up to scare children away from the uncivilized forest. But it's starting to sound like there's a little more to the story. Well, as you know, this is a lonely island without anything but the Ashuramiya mansion on it. When Rosa and I were little brats on stormy nights, we got so scared by the sound of trees rustling in the direction of the forest. We had this crazy delusion that something weird might be looking at us from between those trees. It's only natural for a brat to think of stuff like that. But when Rosa and I complained about it, some people figured it was more than it was some people figured it was more than a brat's imagination. Isn't that right, Anarchy? Yeah. Nissan and I thought you might have coincidentally spotted Father's mistress living in secrecy on this island as she went out for a walk when no one was looking. And of course, Mother felt the same. Even among the older servants, you often heard that ghost story about how the witch of the portrait wanders the mansion at midnight. Outwardly, I laughed it off as just a good, go, just a ghost story, but on the inside. I suspected very much that it hinted at the existence of a hidden mistress. In that case, you're saying that the existence of a 19th person might not be completely ridiculous? That they might actually be somewhere around here? Sounds like one of those devil proofs Rudolph's always talking about. It might be possible to prove that there is a 19th person but it's impossible to prove that a 19th person doesn't exist. Should we continue this discussion under the assumption that there's a person named Beatrice hiding somewhere on this island? That's a good plan from the perspective of risk management. It's probably much more prudent to say she might exist, rather than saying she couldn't exist. I, I see. Sorry, I was a bit careless. Rosa-san, sorry for laughing just now. Huh? Um, it's fine. I, d I don't mind. Hideyoshi apolog apologized deeply for taking the worst-case scenario lightly, despite calling himself the president of a company. Silence fell again. Preparing for the existence of a 19th person would mean, in effect, acknowledging the presence of some unknown person hidden on this island. And since this person might be planning something shady, it was only natural that the conversation would turn in an ominous direction. In the past, Father would sometimes suddenly disappear without telling anyone where he went. After all, he is a man who values silence. It wouldn't have been out of the ordinary for him to shut himself up in some library room after purposefully not telling anyone where he was going. 
However, when the witch theory was slowly refined into the theory about his mistress, people eventually whispered that he was secretly going back and forth to see her. Mom was totally paranoid in her last years. She sometimes suddenly started making a fuss about the servants to start looking for Dad immediately because of some urgent situation. Yes, that did happen sometimes. Mother was always doing things like that in her later years, and that frightening atmosphere still hasn't gone away. I can say it for certain now. She was a person to be pitied. So then, what happened with those large-scale searches of the house? Did they find anything? No. The father wasn't caught foolishly in a hidden room even once. Always, after a long time had passed, he would suddenly show up somewhere. Then he'd say that he'd taken a nap in some library room or that the wind had summoned him to take a walk on the beach. But it was always some place where the servants had already looked. We never knew where father had gone. Even at that time, father, grandfather was famous for his occult inclinations. So some of the servants exaggerated, saying that he might have turned into butterflies and danced around the rose garden. So in short, father frequently disappeared and no one knew where he went. Yeah, since we couldn't find him no matter how much we looked inside the mansion, we got more and more sure that dad might have been somewhere outside. But the area outside the mansion isn't large at all, which leaves only the forest. And if you tie that in with the legend of the witch, you get a theory like this. Father actually built a hidden mansion somewhere in the forest. Inside of which, a mistress by the name of Beatrice lived, and he sometimes went to see her. I was also young at the time. I was so eager to find where father was having his affair that, at one time, I followed him when he went outside. <laughs> of course, it was a failure. Every time father went out, he was oddly intent on avoiding places where he might be seen, and was extremely careful to prevent anyone from spotting him. And he was extraordinarily earnest in his attempts to do so. <laughs> but that actually made me sure. He must have been going out for some reason that the members of his family couldn't know about. And that he'd be going to meet his mistress. Probably trying to avoid being seen. After seeing Hideyoshi nod and say yes yes as though this was quite obvious, Ava got a little sullen. Well, anyway, this island was like a sketchbook in which father, with his western obsession, could draw out all of his dreams. Everything about this island was exactly how father wanted it. It wouldn't be odd at all if there was a hidden mansion somewhere for his mistress to live in. Ava's words spoke for what all of the siblings had come to think. For a while, the room returned to silence again. And everyone listened to the sound of the wind and rain. Was there a hidden mansion on this island? And had Kinzo's mistress been living there in hiding for a long, long time? Everyone thought they were being too suspicious, and they hesitated for a long time without speaking. But everyone shared a common opinion. Kyrie, who had been listening the whole time with her eyes closed, spoke to no one in particular. How long has this rumor about Father's mistress been around? As soon as we moved to this island, about 30 years ago. After all, it probably would have been impossible for him to have a hidden mansion built while we were here. People and materials would have to be going in and out. It would have been exposed quickly. So if it was possible, it happened before we moved here. It probably could have been built along with this mansion when we were still living in Odawara. Since father had to set up a double life with his family and his mistress, it's probably reasonable to assume that he had it all planned from the beginning. And his relationship with that mistress probably went back to the days when we lived in Odawara. Probably. 
If, as father says, she is the source of the vast amount of gold he used to gain the funds that resurrected the Ashuramia family, we could probably conclude that they had a close relationship since Odawara. A relationship trusting enough for her to lend him a vast quantity of gold. I can't even imagine how old that relationship must have been. Perhaps father gave her some kind of valuable advice for succeeding in business. It's natural to think that, out of a sense of gratitude for that, the person gave father the gold. If you think about it that way, it's obvious that they would have a close relationship after that. Rather than a festering relationship with a mistress, it was probably a relationship of gratitude to the person who saved the Ashuramiya family from its crisis. I don't know if what Natsuhi-san's saying has a ring of truth to it or not, but even in that case, isn't building a hidden mansion and having her live in it going a bit too far? Doesn't that mean they felt something a bit more than gratitude? Well, this is all just speculation. In the first place, no one's ever found that hidden mansion. Anarchy, you were planning on expanding the island in this island into a resort, right? As you were doing that, you didn't manage to stumble on it by chance, did you? Maybe you even bumped into some gold there, too. Ha 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 Do you think Rokinjima is Treasure Island or something? Don't play dumb. We know that, although you say you're opening a resort, you really have been planning to investigate the entire island, right? Judging by all that trouble and confusion we were talking about earlier, you haven't been very successful, have you? I don't know what you're talking about, but it's a misunderstanding. Isn't it perfectly natural that investigating this island would be the first step in turning it into a resort? Kraus tried to play dumb, but it was plainly obvious to his siblings, who knew him so well. Kraus was definitely sure of the existence of a hidden mansion, and under the pretense of opening a resort, he had been closely investigating the island, searching for a clue as to the location of the hidden gold. They couldn't tell whether that conviction was just him overthinking things, or whether it was based on some physical proof. Still. If Kraus, with all his guile, was sure, that was enough proof for the other siblings to be sure too. The story about a witch living in a forest is so obviously a fairy tale, but the story about some blonde haired girl living secretly in a mansion no one knows about in the middle of the forest isn't much better. That's right, that really would be just like a fairy tale. You like those, don't you, Rosa? Uh, well, well... When the mansion was built on this island, Father was, set the, was at the height of his prosperity. With his money, he could probably obtain anything, make any of his wild imaginings real. A mansion in the forest where a witch quietly waits. It sounds like the kind of situation Father would like. Doesn't it? Like something from the occult or a fairy tale. It feels like Dad's kind of hobby. On this island on which the Ashuramaya family had lived for 30 years now, a hidden mansion that no one knew about had been quietly built to house a witch, about whom nothing was known except what could be guessed from a portrait. Even this hastily thrown together theory might not be completely delusional, considering all of Kinzo's strange habits and his vast wealth. It might not have been impossible for Father to build a hidden mansion to satisfy his dreams. However, let's be realistic. Would it be possible to house his beloved woman in that hidden mansion for decades without it becoming inconvenient? Well, if there was love, it could have been doable, right? Think of the facilities needed to let his beloved woman live healthily, and in a way that would satisfy Father. For example, even if it was on a small scale, it would have to be an intricate and pleasant residence. And it would probably need to have electricity, gas, 
and running water maintained, as well as some people to see to her needs. Even cooking would be quite difficult. She would need clothes and makeup, the daily necessities. The needs of a woman aren't simple. Would it be possible to maintain all of that without any of the family or the servants noticing? When you say it that way, it sure sounds like a weak point in our theory. But that isn't enough to get rid of my feeling that Dad might have been able to do it anyway. After all, it's Dad we're talking about. That's right. He's our father. If Father wanted to succeed in an endeavor, he would succeed no matter what. Saying that something would be difficult for a normal person, and therefore impossible, doesn't apply when it comes to Father. Indeed, you should never underestimate Father. Father's madness can't be understood by normal people. I wouldn't put it past that Kinzo. As long as you stick to his to this phrase, a considerable amount of credibility can dwell in any absurd story. However, that didn't cause the importance of what Kyrie had said to waver. This was different from stealthily raising a kitten in a cardboard box and keeping it secret from your parents. Taking care of a person in secret over a period of 30 years would be an incalculably massive task. After all, Father's legend of the hidden gold started before he gained possession of Rakanjima. That'd mean his relationship with his mistress was over 30 years long. How old would that make her? In the worst case, she could be as old as us or older, right? By that age, the body starts to break down. I don't care what the mansion's like, I wouldn't use the word agreeable to describe living in a place where people's eyes can't reach, almost like she was under house arrest. That's right. If what Father told us about Beatrice is true, then that relationship has lasted for over 30 years. She might have been a charming young woman at the time, but it probably makes sense to assume she's an old bag like us now. I can easily imagine that, given the contents of that letter. You should talk. <laughs> Chris laughed as if none of this applied to him. Of course, Ava was offended, but she didn't strike back. Quit it, Anarchy. So if everything we're thinking is true, then she should be joining in on Dad's inheritance problem with her head held high. After all, there's a good chance their love is mutual, unlike with Mom. Even if she knows she's his mistress, she might also be proud to be his true wife. That is an insult to Mother. Yeah, sorry. However, everyone knows that it was political marriage decided on by the elders of his, by the elders among his relatives. Because of that, it definitely wouldn't be strange for Dad to have a mistress. The family sank after the Great Kanto earthquake, and Father was set up as the Ashuramiya family head against his will. However, in the beginning, the elder relatives treated Kinzo like a dummy and influenced him powerfully, almost like he was a puppet. He wasn't permitted to decide anything by himself, not even his marriage partner. Ever since he met that golden witch Beatrice in those distant days, Kinzo's legend of the gold was quickly embellished into something dramatic. In other words, it could mean that Kinzo really did find a woman he loved. If she also knew the whole story, even if they weren't marriage partners, it wouldn't have been odd for her to consider herself his true wife inside her heart. And now, the person registered as his true wife was already dead. Which means she might feel confident staking her claim, not just for the rest of his assets, but regarding the battle over the headship too. I see. Now I'm starting to see the purpose of this letter. The headship goes to the one who solves the riddle of this epitaph, of the epitaph. Is that what it means? Even if that mistress was added into the family ranking system, she isn't a direct relative of father, so she'd be inferior even to the children. 
In other words, she'd be one step below Rosa in rank. That wouldn't be a good position to enter the battle for the headship from. I see, so that's it. If someone can solve the witch's riddle, they'll get the headship regardless of rank. In other words, it's the most advantageous condition Beatrice could possibly get, since she's got no chance otherwise. The revival of the Ashurmia family was made possible by the gold Beatrice had bestowed. That was quite a distinguishing service she had provided. She had built that wealth together with Kinzo, so it was natural that she would think of herself as the one who should inherit it. It would also be natural for her to despise the thought of giving it up to the children of the wife Kinzo never loved. How, how could she be so impudent? Even if such a mistress actually exists, joining in on the battle for the rights to the head's inheritance would be a reckless action far above her place. What disregard for her own position. Nancy he turned red, her fist quivering. She had also come into the Ashuramia family register due to complicated circumstances. Those who knew that understood more or less why she was so angry for the sake of Kinzo's dead wife. Well, thanks to that reckless action of hers, we all have an even chance now, right? Father has even given it his silent approval. Will the person who succeeds the Ashuramia family be his mistress Beatrice, one of us, the relatives he doesn't love. Maybe he wants to make us struggle over that to see who's worthy. As Ava giggled roguishly, Kraus shrugged his shoulders and looked away. However, since she's the one who brought this world to light in the first place, maybe that means it gives her a significant advantage. Th that's right. In the first place, if Beatrice meant that, that letter literally, then she's father's alchemist. In other words, she's the manager of his gold. It wouldn't be strange at all if she knew where it was hidden, would it? Isn't that harsh? It's like she's given us a riddle she knows the answer to. She'll probably show up rudely saying, Hey, here's the answer, I'll take the headship now. And snatch everything away from us. That's right. The person who brings up a riddle always knows the answer. There's a good chance that this is all a trap to steal everything from us. If you think about it like that, don't you start to doubt whether she really had any gold in the first place? Why would she tell us about it? All she has to do is keep quiet and embezzle it. It really is. Strange. That certainly was the case. If the epitaph showed the way to the hidden gold, why would she challenge them to try and solve it? If they actually did solve it, would the gold all be stolen from her? Could it be that this person was trying to stir up the siblings th so they'd solve the epitaph, and then plan to steal it away at the last second? It was an extremely logical possibility. No. If you spin the chessboard around, there might be a pretty good chance that they actually do have the gold. Why are you so certain? Wait, Anarchy. Kyrie, please keep talking. Why do you think that? After all, do they really think we'll let go of the Ashuramiya family headship? Just because someone tells us the answer to the riddle in the witch's epitaph? That we'll be so impressed by their answer that we'll just give up? Well, that's true. No way they're not so naive that they assumed we'd just give up after being told the answer to a riddle. That we'd just say, here you go, and hand it over. Of course, the headship of the Ashuramia family is not something that can be handed over so easily. That's it exactly. No matter how Beatrice might one-sidedly propose a game like this, even if she were to spectacularly show us the answer. There's no way we'd obediently hand over the headship. In other words, unless she has a compelling force in the form of challenging us to a game with equal conditions for us all, this won't truly count as a game. You're right. 
Unless the losers have no choice but to give up on the headship. Because of a compelling force. This won't really count as a game. And what might that com this compelling force be? Would they bind us in chains and threaten us into handing over the headship? I see. I get it. They just have to do something to make us want to give up the headship willingly. Yes, I see. To do that, Beatrice would have to own ten tons of gold. Uh, I see. I get it too. In other words, it's a trade? Huh? W what do you mean? A trade? Trade? What? The Assure Me a Family Headship for the Hidden Gold. Beatrice surely plans to tell us the location of the ten tons of gold, and use that as a bribe to gain the Assure Me a Family Headship. R ridiculous! They want to trade the headship of the glorious Assure Me a Family for m money? That's blasphemy. Blasphemy against the Ashura Mia family. Please listen without getting mad. About how much wealth does this glorious Ashura Mia family have right now? Are we really that affluent? The, the definition of affluence is not dependent on property. It is about heart. Our financial situation has nothing to... Krauss interrupted Natsuhi as she started to go on and on emotionally. In this situation, the more she went on like that, the worse it would actually sound. Me aside, I hear your current situations are quite unfavorable. Oh really? I've heard that your financial situation's really bad too. Offering up more and more collateral for new money to gamble with. Repeatedly dabbling in new gambles, unable to accept your losses. If we count what's going on behind the scenes, you're in even bigger financial straits than the rest of us. Just how much money have you lost, Nissan? You have no talent. Who are you saying has no talent? And what do you mean, financial straits? Natsuhi became indignant once more, but Chris raised his hand again and interrupted her. It seems you are making a small mistake. Business is not something that can be judged based on current progress alone. For someone with a long-term outlook on business such as myself, it may sometimes appear at a glance that I have suffered significant short-term losses. Anarchy, we've been collecting evidence. Your position right now isn't one to be proud of. So this is what Kyrie is trying to say. Every one of us has got money trouble. And Beatrice has ten tons of gold. As the only person who knows the location of the ten tons of gold, Beatrice is planning and using it to force us to sell the headship. About how much is the ten tons of gold worth? At a rough estimate, Let's say, 2 billion yen? No, 20 billion yen. With that much piled up, we'd be ecstatic to accept her as the successor. The scene returned to silence. In fact, the rain and wind felt even noisier now. It was probably the sound of the windstorm racing through the insides of their minds. Th th this isn't funny. To think we'd give up the headship to some woman of doubtful origin. Just because she had a little money stored up? D don't be stupid. The headship wasn't even yours in the first place, right? We've got nothing to lose and money to gain. We'll have to calculate our profit and loss, but it's something worth listening to. They knew that Christ had eaten up much of the Ashuramiya family's assets, so it was dregs that remained of, the, of that inheritance, versus the cost of being accepted as the head that Beatrice would pay. It was a shame, but honestly, 
the former was less enticing than the latter. Well, it probably wouldn't end up as four equal portions. Since Anarchy would be giving up his position of successor, his portion would have to be larger. Makes me feel kind of jealous, you know? Dear, the amount of money isn't the problem, right? Your cowardly youngest siblings are trying to sell the glory of the Assure Me of Family mon for money, don't you see? Why aren't you displaying your dignity as the oldest son? Nazi. Stay quiet for a while. Dear? This is a dizzying proposal. We were each planning on getting 20, 250 million yen out of anarchy. If the witch treats us with 10% of those 10 tons... Um... That's 2 billion. Yeah. That'd mean she's treating us with 10 times our original goal. That alone would be more than enough for us. It's not like I've got any attachment to the Assure Me a name. I'd be happy to sell it off. Even if 10 tons is a slightly optimistic figure. Yes, it'd still be a fascinating prospect for us. We were trying to form an alliance among the siblings to kick this outsider called Beatrice out. But if this is her plan, it'll tear apart the unity between us. Yeah, by this point we can state it clearly. The goal of Beatrice's letter was to disturb our alliance. If the three younger siblings, who never had anything to do with the inheritance, were paid enough money to satisfy them, they would happily accept Beatrice as the next head. A moat had been dug all around Kraus. In that case, the negotiations would be one-on-one -on -one between her and Kraus. He tried to look strong, but Kraus's financial and political situation was extremely weak. He might bluff in front of his siblings, but on the inside he was considering entering negotiations, depending on the sum of money involved. In order to bury his losses, Kreis had taken advantage of the fact that Kinzo had shut himself up in his room, and had embezzled Kinzo's personal assets. Therefore, when Kinzo died and the inheritance was distributed, Kreis's situation would probably be investigated. But if he gave up his seat as the head to Beatrice, she would also receive rights to the assets, and as a result the distribution of the inheritance to the siblings would not occur. In other words, Christ's embezzlement might not have to be made known to the other siblings. Of course, the siblings were frightened of Kinzo, but it was doubtful whether they still actually respected him as a father. By this time, they each had their own families, their own wealth, and their own lives. If they were paid enough money in exchange for Rokinjima, the wreckage of Kinzo's dreams, there was a significant likelihood they'd relinquish the Ashura Mia family name. In other words, Beatrice's victory was already guaranteed in this game. Not as the winner of Beatrice's game, but as the winner of Kinzo's game. Kinza once ordered that the epitaph be put on display, and until today, no one had solved it. So Beatrice solved it. In other words, this is less of a game and more like Beatrice's declaration of victory. However, Kyrie still thought there might be a catch. If this was a declaration of victory, Beatrice would only have had to display the gold openly and state her intent to buy the inheritance. And yet, she had gone to all of this trouble, telling the siblings to try and solve the epitaph. Why did she set up this new game, where she agreed to hand over all of the gold and the inheritance to the epitaph solver? Kyrie tried spinning the chessboard around several times. She searched for the sort of ideal strategy Beatrice might be after, something that could lead to this kind of thinking. In the end, she reached a single conclusion. Could it be arrogance? Or maybe she's playing? 
What are you talking about? The witch sent us a letter of challenge, forcing us to try and solve the epitaph. She might be taking us lightly, thinking we could never solve it. However, at the very least, there ought to be an extremely small chance that we do solve it. After all, we have here four of father's children by blood, right? The questioner called together four blood relatives, who, if they tried frantically to work together and avoid having those assets stolen from them, might come across the answer of the riddle by chance. The reason the witch had a superior position in the negotiations compared to the siblings was that only she knew the location of the hidden gold. But if that hiding place was exposed to someone other than her, the witch's advantage would crumble. In short, Beatrice gains nothing but risk by writing this witch's letter of challenge. Of course, it might have had the effect of splitting apart the siblings' alliance, but if that was her only goal, why would she take this risk, however slight it might be? That seems reckless to me. But if we keep in mind a certain type of emotion, that risk becomes comprehensible. And you're saying it's arrogance? Yes, that's right. When people have an overwhelming advantage, they tend to get arrogant. And when they do, they want to show off that advantage to the losers, so they sometimes take on small risks. A moderate amount of risk adds a little spice to the joy of victory. It'd be boring to win without any risk. I understand. I like that kind of thing too. Yeah, I understand it well. I thought of a few plausible explanations for the true motive behind Beatrice's letter, but I think this really might be the truth. The emotion hidden behind that letter was... Arrogance. Arrogance. She's trying to throw her weight around, look down, looking down on us, as if there's no way we could figure out such a difficult epitaph. It might even be possible, if surprising, that the epitaph wasn't written by father, but by her. Sounds great. Solve the riddle of the epitaph, she says. If only I solved it, I would be made the head, right? I'll solve it. I'll accept that witch's challenge. As if those other idiot siblings could solve it. I'll solve it by myself, and then I'll prove that I'm the one who's fit to succeed the Asheramia family. I'll take that challenge. I will. Solve the riddle. And I don't know what time we're going to be at. Oh, still at nine, I guess. That does feel like it's... The game has been set now. And people are taking the epitaph itself more seriously than in the previous episodes. And next time, when we come back, we're going to get what seems like some Beatrice action. But until then, thank you for watching. <laughs>